Um, so I'm Carol. I'm a principal engineer at Equator. We're a, an agency here in Glasgow um, with an office in London too, um, and mostly work on the .NET stack. Um, and I'm a Microsoft MVP and an Umbraco MVP, um, and we'll get into Umbraco in a, a little bit. And you can find me on any of the socials or GitHub um, using at CRV. Um, and just um, if you're looking for more virtual meetups to come along to, um, I help run Ladies of Code Glasgow, um, which is a kind of all different tech stacks, um, all different disciplines, just chatting about code stuff. Um, there's the Glasgow Umbraco user group, which is what it sounds like, is mostly .NET and Umbraco stuff. Um, and there's Scottish developers, which uh, was kind of traditionally .NET development, but we're kind of diversifying across different tech stacks now. And um, you can find most of our meetups on meetup.com or on YouTube. Um, and some friends and I actually um, started a podcast called Candid Contributions about open source um, contribution and our experiences in that, um, if you'd like to listen along. Um, but to get to the point, um, to tonight I'm going to give hopefully getting started in about 10 minutes <laughs> um, or with like five commands, whichever of those two are, are quickest, um, with Umbraco and .NET 5. So I'll just jump straight into, well, I guess a question first. Um, has anyone here used Umbraco? A few hands up. Yeah, cool. Or, or maybe jump in the chat. Um, so um, those who, those of you who have used Umbraco, um, was it recently? If you used, <clears throat> if you had to look at the .NET five or core version, or was it was it in a previous version? Oh, great! Some some folks that that have used some Umbraco eight, some Umbraco seven, and um, looked a wee bit into nine as well. Great. So you might know some of this already. Um, so I will go straight into having a little look at Umbraco for folks who maybe haven't used it before. But if you have, and it was a while ago, it might look a wee bit different. Yeah, so Adam's just said um, you've not looked at it in a while. So it, this might look a wee bit different, what we're looking at just now. Um, and depending how long ago it was, it'll look very different. Um, so let's have a little bit of a quick tour. I'll zoom in a little bit. Um, so I've installed um, what's called the starter kit. So it gives us some kind of base template set up and some content as well. So just as a quick tour of what's here, we've got our homepage, we've got a kind of tree structure here um, for products, people, a blog, contact, and then again, kind of more sub pages um, kind of structure there. Um, and within Umbraco, you can structure stuff, you know, literally like a tree, like your sitemap, or you can, um, you can use it a bit more headless, I guess, is the, the buzzword for it, but you can use it as like a content repo that doesn't necessarily represent um, a site structure. Uh, and it's still a place for, for con content editors to come in, update content, have that published on the web. Um, and more and more often that's via not just rendering it. And so it's Razor underneath, which we'll, we'll look at in a second, um, but also via JSON, via APIs, and then that can be used, you know, even in the previous example that, that we saw, like in static apps. Um, and everything within Umbraco is generally within what's called doc types. And these are kind of like entities of we can we can configure, for example, that the home page, which I'll show you in a second, it has um, a hero section that has a header, a description, call to action. Um, as well as some other content, and we can configure the footer of the site here as well. And just to show you, there you go. <laughs> um, um, and we'll get into some of the content as well, and and, and there's the footer. Um, and what we can do is we can um, set what the structure, like which of these entities are allowed, like what, what structure they're allowed to sit within. So the home page can have any of these pages underneath it, like we saw in the actual site structure. But if we go into, for example, the people doc type, it only allows doc types of type person under it. So we can we can set what content is allowed where on the tree. Um, and we can also, if we've got kind of common um, fields that we want to be across every page, for example, we can set these things called compositions and. You can say so the SEO meta description. We want every page on our site to have this stuff. 
we can set these. And then if we go into um, a person, I hope, <laughs> um, yeah, fab, this example has the it inherits from um, the navigation base. So when I look through all of the different fields that are on um, my nav on this page, you can see that it's inherited these SEO settings. So that's a good way to make sure that we're not duplicating loads of effort. And if we change it in one place, it will change in loads of different places too. And within the CMS, I'll not go into too much detail because we don't have a lot of time, um, but we can also configure data types. So like these fields, you can see this is a text area, this is for tags, this is a, a Boolean um, and so on. You can configure, it comes out the box with lots of different um, data types, but you can configure your own too. Um, and you can configure templates, although I'll show in a second, my preferred way to do that is in code rather than here in the CMS. Um, and one really cool thing I think as a .NET developer is, um, I'll jump to Visual Studio Code and I'll drag that over. Um, there's a, a feature called Models Builder and it actually lets us have our strongly type models that we can then use in Razor. So this is something that didn't used to have when I started using Embraco. Um, we used to do a lot of um, kind of custom controller so that we could then map it to our own um, strong C-sharp objects, but now it actually comes out the box. So you can see up here that when this um, people template was created, it actually has this, this, um, this type of people. And then when we're going, through, when we're navigating through this loop, for example, we can say for each person in the child nodes of this page, so because we're in the people page, I'll jump back and show you the structure in a second. Um, go and get the children of type person and then iterate through them. And what it does is it goes, get the photo of the person, get their email, get their name and so on. Um, and if I jump back to this example, I'll go to people, this will hopefully make a bit more sense. Um, it will show that we've got this list of people and it shows their photo and their name and we can then click through to individual pages for those folks as well. Um, so this is just some of the sample um, content um, and as I said hopefully I can show in um, five commands how we can we can get started with, with exactly that template and hopefully give you a bit of an idea of what you would need to do if you wanted to get started with Umbraco. So if I get my command window that I lost there, yes. fab. So is that big enough? Can we all see the text there? Hopefully it is. Um, so we've got .NET new on Braco. Um, and I'm going to tell it for now just to use SQL CE, um, but that is not obviously, that's not really the way you would use it on production. You can you can use um, SQL Server, you can use Azure SQL, um, but just for easing this on my um, demo here, I'm going to use SQL CE. I'm going to look a new project and call it .NET Chef. So this will go away and create that project for me. Great, and I can do, uh, I need to change my repo. And build. running on the same port as my previous one was. Yeah, so that's just it. here. So what it'll do, because we've, this is the first time we've run this, it will notice that we don't actually have Umbraco installed. So what it'll do is it'll come up with an install screen. Um, and we can tell it um, who we are um, as an admin. We can set up our admin user. Um, so I will, because you can see the password, to give it a really, really secure password, of course. Um, 
and I can say install. So because this is on SQL CE, I, I won't have a next step to, to do. If I was setting it up with a, a command, um, sorry, with a, a connection string for a real database or for, for a production database, um, it would then on the next screen, it would ask me for the credentials that we wanted to set it up for, and it would go and um, create all the tables and all of the, the data within that database that it needs to run in Braco, including this user that we're setting up. That will just work away in the background and then it will restart and direct you to our Umbraco. Great. So we now have a completely empty Umbraco instance. There's nothing in here. Um, so what we'll do now is I'll bring our command back up. Stop that for now, hopefully. So what I can do now is if we want to have all of that um, sample data and to install the, the starter kit, which is a really good way if, if you you just want to see it with some real data types and real doc types and some real content. And it also creates the templates. So that example that I showed you of the Razor page, it creates all of those for you in the starter kit. So if I, oh, no, sorry. I think I'm going to go into... Oh, and I think I need to do this because it's not launched yet, which I'll get to in a second. Yeah. Um, so because Umbraco is not yet out within .NET Core, .NET 5, I think it's in two weeks yesterday, actually, I think. Um, I think it's the 28th. Um, so I had to do pre release because it's not out just yet. So now if I do my .NET run, you can see kind of um, it installed our package there. And now when, when I do .NET build, sorry. Oh, it's doing a build anyway, all good. So what it's doing in this .NET run is it's starting the starter kit and, and it'll actually run what's called a migration in the background. It's creating all those, those nodes, it's doing all the stuff it needs to do. And then it's starting up on that same port again. So when I had no content in here before, hopefully when I refresh, it will have all that lovely starter kit content. Great, here it is. It worked. Um, so then in our so our our .NET new, our .NET run, .NET build. Um, and the add starter kit package, for, well, and a CD in there as well, so that's our five commands. Um, we're able to get from zero to a running a Braco project with sample content and with sample templates. Um, they're ready for you to, to get started and, and have a play around. And kind of as .NET developers, uh, assuming a lot of us are at um, this meetup, then what's really good about the new .NET 5 we as they're used to in previous versions that anyone who's maybe used before there would be a lot of quite specific and braco ways to do things um and what the team have done um as, as the shift to dotnet core dotnet 5 has been to do a lot more the dotnet core way so configurations done the dotnet core way and and lots of more different things which means um you can easily transfer your knowledge from from the dotnet development over to doing braco development um, with a lot less of knowledge of have of having to know the Umbraco way <laughs> to do stuff. Um, so yeah, hopefully that helped. Um, and if you're interested in any more information, I will quickly just drag this window up. Um, so there is a .NET um, 5 specific page, I'll share these in the chat, um, on the Umbraco documentation. Um, and it links you to lots of community blog posts as well as um, probably a much better guide to getting started than I've just done. Um, one thing you will need to do that I didn't need to do um, because I already had them installed is to install the templates um, and yeah, have a read of the docs and, 
and I'd say just just have have a go um have a little look around and and try it out um the starter kit information is here um, and I've got a blog post, a couple of blog posts that I'll share as well. So one is working with the command line interface. I should say you can, once you've got the templates installed within Visual Studio, you can do file new and then use Umbraco templates there. Um, and also um, I've got an example here of, of building kind of headless APIs that you can get your content from your CMS right through as well. Um, so I'll share that too, if that's useful for folks. And yeah. I think that's me. Anyone get any questions? <laughs>